My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, today we're going to talk about the beautiful qualities of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions who followed him to the T and being and following Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they embedded this great love for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's why Allah is saying radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an i am happy with the sahaba and they were happy with me Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith my sahaba are like the guiding stars whomsoever you follow you will be rightly guided today we will listen how they loved nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the immense love they had maybe inshallah this love we can you know create this also in our lives we can practice this in our lives the sunnah of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we can love him also inshallah he who was the best of the children of adam he who will be the first to be granted intercession he who possesses the honor of wasila the lofty position the fadila the rank above the rest of creation and the maqam mahmuda raised platform he was granted the kawthar a fountain in paradise he who was taken to the highest heaven to meet with his lord and return to earth to to narrate his encounter he is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ba'd a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhan nabiyyu inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashshiran wa nadhira o oh, my prophet indeed we have sent thee as a witness and a bearer of glad tidings and a warner to us my dear brothers this beloved of allah was sent to us to guide us to show us what lifestyle will be accepted on the day of qiyama when the anger of allah will be such that because of the people that was the anger will be great that allah will have upon his ummah and that love that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have for us he sent this person nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to come and show us because of the love that allah have for us as a teacher an administrator and a leader our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was impeccable he didn't just give commands he was the first to do the action for example in the time of the battle of the trench Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was digging alongside his companions. He didn't stand one side as the boss and told them to dig. No, he was digging with the, with with his sahaba. His selflessness, selflessness and sincerity, his honesty, truthfulness, his generosity, there was no comparison. When the people of Makkah persecuted him and he was injured, wiping the blood from his face he said oh my allah forgive my people for they don't know what they are doing our prophet my dear brothers and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin and we have sent not we send nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam only as a mercy to the world rahmatu lil alamin listen very carefully my dear brothers so that we don't sit relax every single day and say alhamdulillah i'm a muslim nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not come to this world as rahmatul muslimin he came as rahmatul alamin proving to us that each and every human being each and every creation is important in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those family members of us that are not muslim yet those brothers and sisters and fellow workers in our jobs that are not muslim yet they need to get the message of la ilaha illallah for indeed nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came as a mercy to mankind we need to continue inviting people telling people showing people the beauty of islam 
Nabi Muhammad SAW said, Amali wa amaluk. Wa amalu Rasulullah SAW da'wa ilallah. Nabi Muhammad SAW said, My work is your work. And my work is to invite people to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he was lying on his deathbed, what was his cry? Our family members that we know that was lying on the deathbed, they asked for this, they asked for that. Look after this, look after that. Nabi Muhammad SAW was saying, Ummati, Ummati, Ummati. My people, my people, my people. Nabi Muhammad SAW, when he was lying on his deathbed, he said to his daughter Fatima, Ya Fatima, look in the house. If there's something, a date or anything, then you take that and you go outside and you ask any person, is my father owing you something? Did my father borrow from you something? And you take this date and you give it to that person and you, and you ask him, forgive my father. And when Fatima came back to her father, she said, My dear beloved father, there's nothing in the house. That was the state of our beloved Prophet. That was the state of the only person that is called in the Quran, Habibullah, the beloved of Allah. That is the person, my dear brothers, one night when he was in his house, very late, he heard two people talking outside. And when he went outside, he saw Umar anhu wa Abu Bakr, they were talking outside. And he confronted them and said, why are you guys not asleep? Why are you outside? And they said, Ya Rasulullah, we are too shy to tell you. Nabi Muhammad Wasallam told them, there's nothing between us. No barriers. Talk to me. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we are keeping each other company this hour of the night because we are hungry. We want the night to pass. And they returned the same question to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, did we woke you up? Ya Rasulullah, why are you awake? And, he, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi said, I'm too shy to tell you. And they said, but Rasulullah, there's no barriers between us. He lifted up his, his stove and they could see the stones on his stomach. I am awake for the same reason that you are awake. I'm so hungry I can't sleep. Habibullah mentioned in Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear beloved brothers, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very compassionate, very merciful. He played with orphans that were shunned by society. He joked with children and served the elderly. In, well, in one well-known incident, when he was going in, in shujud, he prolonged the shujud because one of his grandsons was climbing on his back. He didn't push him aside. The love that he showed for his children. The kindness he extended towards the earth. The creatures that dwelled on the earth. He looked after animals. And once he was looking at a bird whose wing was, he was injured. He was doctoring this bird. Nabi Muhammad Wasallam was an icon for justice. He did not discriminate between strong and weak, rich or poor, friend or enemy, and a Muslim or otherwise. His relationship was with everyone was based on love, affection, and understanding. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, the Sahaba's Im immeasurable love for the Prophet ﷺ knew no bounds. They were honored to spend their lives with the Prophet ﷺ. They learned from the words of the greatest teacher, and they saw the Quran in living form. They ate with him, they drank with him, they shed tears and blood at his side. The Sahaba lived their lives in the image of the most perfect of creation, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why Allah is saying in the Quran, Radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. I am happy with this Sahaba, and they were happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali radiallahu anhu was asked how much time he spent in worship a day. 
he replied to the person who asked the question. He said, I spend my whole day in worship. The person who asked the question was confused. The whole day? What about eating, drinking, and sleeping? Listen to the answer of Ali Radulan. He says, I ate like the Prophet did. I drank like the Prophet did. And I sleep like the Prophet slept. So I'm the whole day in Ibadat. Allahu Akbar. We are we in, me and you, my dear brothers. Who do we follow? Like who are we eating? The fork is on the wrong side or the left side. Three forks this side. Three blades on the other side. Who do we follow? We too shy? Scientists have now recently, they have found that the silver of putting the spoon in the mouth causes cancer after some time. And the fingertips of the three fingers, putting it in your mouth when you eat with your hand, the sweetness helps with the digestion of your food. Nabi Muhammad taught us this 1439 years ago. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the Prophet is more worthy of the believers than themselves. The Prophet said, None of you will be a true believer until I am more beloved to you than yourself. Kitab al-Bukhari. Once Umar al-Anu was walking with the Prophet and he said, By Allah, I love you, O Prophet of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ asked Umar, more than your children? And Umar replied, yes, my Prophet. The Prophet then asked him, more than your money? And Umar ﷺ replied, yes, my Prophet. And then the Prophet asked him, more than yourself, O Umar? And Umar ﷺ replied, no, O Prophet of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ then told him, O Umar, your faith will never be complete until you love me more than you love yourself. To rectify this, Umar al-Anu briefly isolated himself. He went one side. And when he returned, he stood in the center of the masjid and proclaimed, O oh Prophet of Allah, now I love you more than myself. And the Prophet asked him, Only now, Umar? Only now, Umar? And Umar Anu replied, I ask myself, who do I need more, myself or the Prophet of Allah? And I found that I needed the Prophet more. I will not intercede for myself on the day of judgment, but the Prophet of Allah will. My deeds will not place me at the highest level of levels, but my love for the Prophet will. I did not take myself from the darkness to the light, but the Prophet of Allah did. Accordingly, the love of the Prophet deepened in my heart as compared to the love that I have for myself. My dear beloved brothers, what do we learn from this? The love that we should have for the Prophet wasallam. Are we putting ourselves first? Are we still saying nafsi, nafsi, nafsi? Myself, my family, my house, my children. Or are we also concerned about the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Are we also concerned, that we have the concern that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had about the ummah, about the shortness of this life? Inshallah ta'ala, we should try inshallah to practice the sunnah so that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be merciful to us also on the day of qiyamah inshallah ta'ala. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away, Bilal radial anhu couldn't stay in Medina anymore. There was too many things in Medina that reminded him of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he departed to the land of Sham near Damascus, and he also got married there. But one night, Bilal woke up crying, and his wife asked him, "Yeah, my my husband, what is wrong?" And he answered, I saw the messenger of Allah last night. And the Prophet said to him, What is this foolishness, Bilal? Why don't you visit us? 
Bilal radhiyallahu anhu stood up crying unable to control himself and set off to Medina When he reached Medina Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu was there to greet him and they asked him very politely Ya Bilal please make adhan for us like you made adhan in the time of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Bilal radhiyallahu anhu replied Oh forgive me Amirul Mukminin Abu Bakr I cannot call the adhan after the death of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Umar radhiyallahu anhu came to Bilal and he apologized but then the two grandsons of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam hasan wa husain shibab li ahli jannah they came running to bilal they embraced him and bilal was saying he could smell the scent on them after they embraced he could smell nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what did these children ask him they asked him please go up and make adhan like in the time of our grandfather how can he refuse them bilal radhi anhu he ascended to the the top part where he normally used to stand to make the adhan and he started allahu akbar allahu akbar allah is the greatest Medina cried out again Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar the people were running from their houses and they were asking has the message of Allah been revived the message of Allah been revived they remember this voice as the muazzin in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah I bear witness that there's no god but Allah Men came out they closed their shops they ran towards from where the adhan is coming Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah I bear witness that there's no god but Allah Men and women were yelling in the streets crying they know this voice it reminded them of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam my dear brothers when bilal radhiyallahu anhu reached the next part of the adhan wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah i be witness that muhammad is the messenger of allah he choked and he couldn't continue with the adhan i be witness that muhammad is the messenger of allah he choked and he wasn't able to finish the call of prayer bilal came down and it is narrated that medina was crying the last time people were crying like that was the day when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away but after hearing the adhan and coming to the to the one part that nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the message of allah the tears was flowing in medina look at the love my dear brothers that the people had for nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were the most successful people inshallah we must make a lot of dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must put this love into our hearts that whatever we do in our lives first ask ourselves before an important choice in our lives is allah happy with me is this the way nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have handled it and we take our guidance from there inshallah after making our istikhara also abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu anhu my dear brothers and sisters in islam do we remember when the quraysh was chasing our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam trying to kill him Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu was on his side and they were running up the mountain Quraysh chasing them trying to kill Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when they reached the top they found the cave what did Abu Bakr do 
He said, Ya Rasulullah, you wait outside. I will go inside the cave to clean it for you. Abu Bakr Radul Anu, he went inside the cave. He took his shawl that was around him. He cleaned the cave inside. He broke it. He then torn pieces from the shawl and he saw some holes in the cave and he filled those holes because maybe there's snakes or scorpions, whatever might be in the cave that might bite Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After cleaning the cave, he then told Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to enter the cave. Our beloved Prophet was so tired running the mountain and Abu Bakr radil anhu told him, put your head on my, on my lap. When Nabi Salaam's head was on the lap of Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr then noticed there was a, a hole that he, he missed. He didn't have enough cloth to fill that hole. And he saw this spider, or not spider, a snake or a scorpion coming out, and it bit him. Abu Bakr at that stage had two choices. One, he can shout and wake the Prophet of Allah to save his life. Or, he could stay in the same position without disturbing the Prophet and die. Abu Bakr radul anu, due to his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, accepted the poison to enter his body. And he stayed calm. The poison spread through his body. And he couldn't bear the pain. One teardrop fell on the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet woke up. The Prophet asked Abu Bakr, Ya Abu Bakr, what's happening? What's wrong? Abu Bakr explained, Ya Rasulullah, something bit me. I had such severe pain. I couldn't keep the teardrop from falling on your face. I apologize. Abu Bakr Anu replied and explained this to Rasulullah Sallallahu and Rasulullah said, but you could have waked me. But listen, my dear brothers, to the immense love that Abu Bakr anhu had for the Prophet ﷺ. He was prepared to die, but he didn't want to disturb our beloved Prophet of resting. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, how much do we love our Prophet ﷺ? What sunnah are we following? What are we really doing to that people can see also that we live as Muslims and we follow the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah ta'ala, we hope that when we listen to the lifestyle of our Prophet and the Sahaba, that we also will have this desire to follow Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the T. So that through this, Allah can change our lives and Allah can change our wives' lives and our children's lives. So then inshallah the day when we close our eyes and we will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can also enter Jannah without reckoning inshallah if we can only make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. During the time of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there was a sahabi by the name of Julaybin radil anu. This person or this sahabi was very short in height deformed in appearance his lineage was not known. No one knew who his parents were. With no clan to protect him. No tribe willing to accept him as their own. He was a lonely figure. Even the small children of Medina would tease and mock him. And because of his disabilities, no one would allow him to sit in their company. He survived as best as he could. Many a lonely night in Medina, he spent wandering the streets in despair. Tears of desperation would run down his cheeks. There was no one willing to offer him love or compassion. He had no family and not a single friend in the world. Life for him was a lonely struggle. But Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived in Medina. The fortunes of Julaybin changed. He would go and sit in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and listen intently. Really speaking, he would out of shyness keep his gaze lowered. 
he now had the best friend in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those days of loneliness and despair were over. For the best of creation had arrived in Medina. He was now part of the community of believers. One day he was sitting in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, O Julaybeen, ask me for anything. Anything you desire, ask me. He raised his head slowly and said in, shy, in a very shy voice, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Allah has blessed me with your companionship. I get to sit by your blessed feet, hear to your blessed words. What more could I desire? The Prophet of Allah asked him, How would you like to get married, my dear Julaybin? He smiled shyly, wondering who would want to marry him. And he answered, Yes, Messengers of Allah, I would like that. The Prophet of Allah went to the house of a prominent and noble Sahabi from amongst the Ansar. He said, I have come to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. The Sahabi was overjoyed and said, O oh, Messengers of Allah, what could be greater blessing for us as a family? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I do not ask for myself, it is for Julaybi that I'm asking. The Sahabi was left stunned. For Julaybi, he asked in bewilderment. Yes, for Julaybi, replied the Messenger of Allah. And then he answered to the Prophet of Allah. He said, let me consult with my wife. He went and told her, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked for the daughter's hand, for our daughter's hand in marriage for Julaybib. She started crying and wailing, making a noise. No, not for Julaybib. Anybody else but not for Julaybib. I will never allow this. This was the mother. And to listen, she, the daughter was listening to the to the, to the loud screaming in the house and she came down. It is said that she was so beautiful that there was none amongst the women of the Ansar who could compete with her beauty. She was so shy and modest that perhaps the sky itself had never seen her head uncovered. She had so much taqwa that she would spend her days and nights in worship. The daughter asked, what was happening? And she was told that the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants your hand in marriage for Julaybib. As the mother was continuing crying and making a noise, the daughter started to speak. Oh my mother, fear Allah, ittaqullah. Think of what you are saying. Are you turning away the Prophet of Allah? Oh, my mother, it does not suit a believer to make their own decisions once Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have decided on a matter. Do you think that the Prophet of Allah will disgrace us? How blessed is the status of Julaybib that Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are asking for your daughter's hand in, on His behalf. Don't you know that the angels themselves envy the dust on the feet of one who is beloved to Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send me Julaybim. For there is no greater privilege than for me to be blessed by such a husband. The Prophet of Allah has arrived with such a wonderful gift. Yet, my mother, you are crying and making a noise. The mother's heart, being filled with remorse, said, Stop, my daughter. Don't say any word more. Indeed, I have earned. I repent. I repent a thousand times over. For at this moment, there is no one whom I would like you to have to marry you than Julaybib. 
The following day, the nikah was made. Umar, Uthman and Ali radu anhu pre present Julaybin with a gift of money to help with the walima and to purchase accommodation for him. But shortly after the marriage, there was an expedition. And Julaybin joined the expedition. And on the day when they need to leave for the expedition, his father-in-law pleaded with him, Oh, Julaybim, this is your, this is just an expedition. It is not a compulsory jihad. It is a voluntary jihad. And you are newly married. So spend time with your wife. Listen to the words, my dear brothers, from this brother, this Sahabi, listen to his words. He said, Oh, my father, you say a very strange thing. My beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in the battlefield facing the enemies of Islam and you want me to sit at home with my wife? No, I will sacrifice my blood and my soul rather to see my Prophet facing hardships while I sit at home in luxury. Julaybib was indeed a strange sight carrying a sword almost the size of, his, of himself. The Sahaba stared at him when he was fighting. They stared in wonderment at him. The sweet, gentle Julaybib was transformed into a lion when he saw the enemy in front of him. And he was saying, Who dare wage war upon my prophet? He said as he charged into the ranks of the enemy. And he was killed. After the battle, the Prophet ﷺ asked the Sahaba to go and to see if anyone was missing from their families and clans. Each one returned, accounting for all his family members. The Prophet ﷺ spoke with tears in his eyes. He asked, But I have lost my beloved Julaybib. Go and find him. They found his body basically in pieces, lying next to seven of the enemy that he slaughtered in the battlefield. The Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked for his grave to be dug as the Prophet of Allah held the body of Julaybib and he said, O oh Allah, he is from me and I am from him. May our mothers and fathers be sacrificed for you, O oh Julaybib. How great is his status. Thus a Sahabi, who had once lived as an outcast, shunned by the society around him. He loved Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he reached such high status. He was of not good looking, but was blessed with a beautiful wife. He who was poor was blessed with a wealthy, wealthy wife. He who had no family status was blessed by a wife with noble status. He who had lived in loneliness and despair was loved by Allah and His Messenger. He had the message of Allah saying, O oh Allah, He is from me and I am from Him. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, these stories of Sahaba, the history of our Islam needs to be revived in our lives so that our Iman can move higher up. If I look in the mirror today and each one of us we look in the mirror today and we ask ourselves, am I still making the same type of Salah that I made one month or two months or three months ago? Have my, man de my iman decreases or, or did it go up? Am I a better Muslim now or am I still the same Muslim? Am I still making the same mistakes or am, I, or am I a better Muslim? My dear brothers, listening to the stories of Sahaba, listening to the characteristics of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our iman will definitely increase. 
our eyes. The veils will be removed from our eyes and our ears. For indeed, sometimes we have veils on our eyes we don't see. We have veils on our ears we don't really hear. Many of us sitting here today with myself included, many a times we hear the adhan, the call of Allah, but we don't respond. We will make it later. I'm busy, I'm busy now. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the time has come that we need to revive the sunnah in our lives. Our children, my dear brothers and sisters, our girls and our boys, what do they know about our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what do they know about the Sahaba who went through hardships so that we can be free Muslims today? The area that we are sitting today, Qatar, part of the Arabian Peninsula, how the Sahaba, the Prophet of Allah, had to run through these deserts, saving his life so that we can be free Muslims today. Our beloved Prophet, Jabal Thur, a very high mountain, the enemy behind him, they're going to kill him. Imagine how he was running. So that we can be free Muslims today. Inshallah ta'ala we make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah put the love for the Prophet in our hearts. That we can practice it in our daily lives. So that on the day of Qiyamah that Allah can be happy with all of us inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must protect our wives and our children. That they also can practice the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Yemen, in Syria, and wherever the Muslims are suffering, that Allah must remove the suffering from them. Inshallah, we can only make dua for them. But inshallah, Allah knows best, inshallah. We put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad Kama salaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim Wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad Kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim Fil alameen innaka hamidun majid